Welcome to Paris for a real festival of gymnastics. Not only have the French managed to attract some of the top gymnasts in the world for one of the year's most prestigious invitation internationals, but they've also persuaded them to take part in a new kind of team event, a mixed pairs competition. More of that later, but first, the individual championships. Daniela Silavash of Romania, the Olympic silver medalist, heads the women's entry. She opened with a 9.85 on floor, and her second piece of apparatus is the vault. And Yurchenko with a full twist. Silivash has already seen Olympic gold medalist Boginskaya score 9.9 .9 on vault. So she really has a fight on her hands. The Arab Spring coming into the Reuter board. And the one and a half somersault with the full twist. That was an extremely good vault other than the landing tremendous momentum needed to be able to propel their bodies and rotate and twist from the horse. And there's the score, 9.9, .9, she's equaled Boginskaya on the vault. And Boginskaya added a 9.8 on bars and a 9.875 on beam. It now all depends on this floor exercise. Nice piked full in, back out. That's two somersaults and a twist in the first, exiting piked in the second. Boginskaya, bronze medalist in Seoul in the all-around event. One of the few gymnasts who remains slim and glissom. Many of the gymnasts have a weight problem. And this can only be to her advantage. Quite a unique floor routine. The dance, the extremely dramatic, and the tumbles equally as difficult. Full in, back out there to finish. Superb work from Svetlana Boginskaya. Since Seoul, she really has accumulated much more difficulty into her routine. A good score, 9.8 for her. So Silavash comes to beam knowing that she needs 9.8 or better to take gold. This is a tremendous battle between Daniela Silivash and Svetlana Boginskaya, who are the favourites for the forthcoming European Championships. And it's on this piece of apparatus that Silivash shines. Only the slightest wobbles, but she manages to disguise them. Tremendous natural balance. The routine lasts a minimum of one minute and 15 seconds, but that was really tremendous. She needs an excellent score to overhaul Boginskaya and take the all-around gold. And there, a bird's-eye view of that beam, only four inches wide. And they use it almost like the line on a motorway. That's the tumbling series, double flick, 
straight back. And she's done enough. 9.88. Silivash takes the all-around gold. Andreas Wecker, the young East German, was in with a great chance of taking gold in the men's all-round when he came to floor. And the only man between Andreas Wecker from East Germany and the gold medal is McGilney from the USSR. But unfortunately, he only scored 9.4 on floor, so this really does put Wecker in with a chance. old and fresh into the senior ranks since the Seoul Olympics. Compulsory balance, very difficult to hold, especially when they're puffed out after galloping around the floor. An unstable finish, but a double, double back somersault with a full twist to finish. And 9.45 for Vecca. A disappointing score there for Vecca. He failed to close the door on Magelny, and that meant that the Russian went to high bar knowing he only needed better than 9.6 to take the gold. And it's on this piece of apparatus that Valentin Mogelny's real style comes through. One of the most classic gymnasts in the world. He's been on the international scene since 1985, but he's never managed to take a big title. But that must be enough for him. An excellent routine, a sturdy landing, and surely an all-around gold medal. Yes, that's enough. 9.85. Valentin Magilny takes the all-around gold. In the apparatus final, Sullivash added the beam title, and Boginskaya took bars and vault. But it was the Chinese number one, Chen Kuting, who stole the show. Chen Kuting has promised to take a big international title since she first appeared in the World Championships in Rotterdam in 87. Generally, the Chinese have lots of elegance, but they really are without the strength and the tumbles. But little Chen Kutin, very, very powerful girl. Just look at this tumbling. Tight-legged and an easy double back. Ting, 17 years old and only 4 feet 11 tall and she can really master every inch of it. Brilliant routine there from China's Chen Kuting. And there's the score, 9.95 and the individual gold medal on floor. This 
brilliant tumbling. Feet closely clasped together, close hands, and really developing so much speed across the floor to catapult that somersault in the air. And in the men's finals, McGilney added the floor gold before there was a real surprise on the pommel horse. Flavio Rotter from Switzerland. Wonderful to see a Western European take a major title because these individual championships at invitational competitions are very important. And perhaps on pommels, the most difficult task of all for a Western European to overhaul people like Vecca and McGilney. A creditable 9.68 gives him the gold. Well, Vecca took the rings title and went into the high bar looking for a second gold. And this boy is really something special on the high bar. At Avignon, in the Junior European Championships, he took East Germany's first ever gold medal. And just look at that, that was a Kovac, double back somersault to catch, and he has the audacity to do two in one routine, followed by a catch -up. So far, faultless. It's one thing being able to produce the skills, but another being able to land them. Just look at that, a triple back somersault. Wonderful work there from Andreas Becker. There's the first Kovac, somersaulting over, catching the bar, and look at that, a 10. Becker takes the individual gold on high bar. Two goals for Vecca. We'll be back with the pairs competition. Join us again in a couple of minutes. Welcome back. Well, I told you it was a real festival of gymnastics. And this is Ana Bautista of Spain just demonstrating how she won the sporting rhythmic event. But we're waiting now for something really different, which is a pairs competition, a mixed pair, a man and a woman making up a team from each of the countries. They each have to perform on a piece of apparatus which they have to nominate before the round. And to make it doubly different, it's a knockout competition. So if you fail head-to-head uh, -head against your opponents, you're out. We're joining the competition now at the last eight, the quarterfinals. Monica, I don't think I've ever seen a competition like this before. No, it's run under totally unusual rulings. Here, the Russian team, they must be favorites. Svetlana Boginskaya, she's chosen to go on asymmetric bars, and she's paired with Valentin Mogilny, so two world champions, quite a powerful team. Yes, I would think that they're pretty invincible. This brilliant high and low bar routine. Boginskaya just demonstrating everything that is required within the routine, and a new dismount. That's a full twisting double back leg one. Yes, this is a very interesting competition because here we are just a couple of weeks before the European Championships. Everybody working up. 1989, a big year for gymnastics with Europeans and World Championships. Boginskaya now the Russian number one with the retirement of Elena Shushanova. Her score there, 9.875. And here, Valentin Mogilny, who's elected to go on parallel bars. And essential that he does well. Boginsky has given him a good start. And I think they'll certainly consider them favourites to get through this round because they're paired against uh, probably the third of three French pairs.
we begin to see the gymnast's favorite choice of apparatus coming out here. And McGillney, a tremendous stylish. Parallel bars always been one of his best. That was a lovely exercise. Yes, that's a good start for the uh, Soviet duo there. Mogilny and Boginskaya, rather a daunting prospect for Mermet and Korteman from France, who are head to head against them. And there's a good start, 9.75, so their combined total, 19.675. Karine Mermet from France. The uneven bars, the asymmetric bars. She too is going extremely well. Full twisting giant, double back dismount. The middle of the routine was equally as good as Boginskaya, but the difficulty was lost on the dismount. A good score, 9.675 for France's Mermet. But a long double back, giving her a penalty. Stefan Kotoma going on pommel horse. Interesting gamble he's taking because he's really a high bar specialist and he hasn't been on that, hoping to save that for when the competition gets tougher. But I thought he might go on that. Oh, and he's paid the penalty. Look at that. That wasn't his dismount. Comes off the pommel. I'm afraid that puts paid to any slim chances that the French pair had. <laughs> He is a tremendous uh, gymnast on the high bar, real high bar specialist. I'm surprised he didn't go for that piece. Of course, the men are only doing four out of the six pieces. And uh, this, only the quarter final. So he possibly is keeping his best to last, hoping that he would get through further in this round. Well, the gamble hasn't paid off. Kutama and Mermet go out, and Boginskaya and Mogilny go through to the next round. 9.1 his score, combined total 18.775. Christina Bontash from Romania. Her partner is Stefan Marianne Stoichan. And they are the number two strings for the Romanians. But that is a brilliant vault. It didn't half lift from the top. Pity about the bounce back on the landing. This is her second vault. So the score that we'll see will be the average. The propulsion from the top of the apparatus. She almost had time for another twist. Christina Bontash. The new star in Romanian gymnastics, she'll be competing in the European Championships. Just 15 years old, third in the junior Europeans. And her score, 9.675. So now Marianne Stoichan, also on vault. Full twisting Sukahara. And a sensible choice having both vaulting because they have two opportunities at the vault so, so their score is averaged almost a safe journey into the next round again nice flight but a little bit untidy before the landing 9.626 19.3 and that certainly left the door open this really um, a hit and miss competition and the Romanian pair up against it now because they're paired against uh, Wang Chongsheng and Chen Kuiting from China. Kuiting won the floor with that beautiful exercise as we saw in the individual finals and Wang Chongsheng won two pieces of apparatus as well including the parallel bars, which is the piece he's going on in this round. Kuting going well. She did make an error, but it was so well disguised it may have gone unnoticed. But that was a, a definite error. Full twisting double back dismount and a hefty jump back. 
be interesting to see what her score is. They need to be in the high nights. Double twister there and two back somersaults, but she really didn't land it at all. 9.625 and nearly all of that lost on the landing. One twist, two twists, but it's a very difficult dismount and three steps back. She could have lost certainly two tenths on that landing. Now Wang Chongsheng in the individual competition won the parallel bars final, so he's no mean performer. He hasn't got injured arms there, just preventative bandages for the landing from that very, very difficult one and three quarter tuck somersault where he landed on his forearms as an opening element. Flying back, the underswing, and then straddles up to handstand. The dismount. And he lands that well, just a tiny bit off balance. But now we've got to wait and see. This one, very tight. Total of 19.45, they're through. Vontash and Stoichan are out. And now it's France versus Hungary. This Beata Storcher. And that a very, very nice side somersault with a quarter twist. Lovely vault. Good to see the girls trying something different from the Yurchenkos. Quarter twist on, side somersault, and then finishes off the twist to land facing forwards. Nine point four two five for Storch's vault. Now Boda on high bar. Laszlo Boda, not one of the best known Hungarians. And we probably won't hear of them again after that. Certainly not the sort of start that the Hungarians wanted to this round of the competition. His partner did well, but he's blown it now. And with this new form of competition, it immediately means that the French pair, who they're up against, can readjust, rethink their competition strategy. They've now got to be safe rather than too adventurous, Monica. Oh, yes, they must choose the next piece safely. This is the most interesting part of the competition, finding out which uh, pieces of apparatus the gymnasts favour and on which piece they're most confident. The one thing they're not allowed to do, it lands a beautiful triple there to finish with, but it's uh, a bit too little too late in his case the one thing though the gymnasts are not allowed to do is to change the piece of apparatus they're going to go on to mid-round the french have already selected their pieces they're going on asymmetric bars and parallel bars they can't change that now as a result of that fall and this an amazing recovery after the fall a triple back somersault dismount but only 9.3 to score and 18.725 for their combined scores. Karine Boucher. She's selected the asymmetric bars for this round of the competition. Only finished 14th in the overall individual. Scored 9.55 on this piece. It was her best piece of apparatus. 
Nice catch of. She certainly has some good tricks, but lacking in body tension and the bend of the arms and every movement, of course, deductible. Hence the 9.55 she would have scored in the all-around event. But a better routine, obviously, from her, 9.675, so that's a good start for the French pair. And her partner, Claude Carmona, Parallel bars. Carmona going well. Nicely held half lever there. Carmona seventh in the individual all-round but that's a good exercise and after those mistakes by the hungarians i'm sure they'll go through yes confirmation there 9.45 his score 19.125 and that's enough Anne-Marie baudouin from france Top French pair, she's elected floor. Anne-Marie, a particularly expressive floor worker. Double somersault there, whip the first shape and pike the second. Unfortunately for her, a mistake. That was meant to be a punch front out of the full twisting back somersault, and she missed it, and it was obvious. Anne-Marie Baudouin, obviously, taking things absolutely as they come, using up her pieces in the best order at the moment that she achieved in the individual competition. Her best piece was the beam on which she scored 9.75. She used that in the first round. Now she's gone to floor her second best score in the individual. She scored 9.55 there in this the second round of this competition. But really, John, she can't afford an error because they're partnered against the almighty Daniela Silivash and Marius German from Romania. And 9.725 for her floor was rather a generous mark. Gilles Petit. Yes, Monica, that uh, opponent pairing this time looks really formidable, especially as Silavash is going on beam, which is her strongest piece. I think the home crowd must have given Baudong an extra cheer for the judges to come up with a 9.725. But I don't think Petit will be able to match that score for that routine. We'll just have to wait and see. Good exercise, nonetheless. And I think it's fair to say that uh, very often the home competitors get just a little bit of uh, favor from the judges and the French deserve it this is a tremendous competition and in this magnificent Palais Omnisport they've got a terrific crowd and 9.7 he scored 19.425 that's a good combination score for them but will it be good enough well they're certainly going to need every tenth Daniela Silivash to beam.
won the all-round event and took gold on this piece of apparatus in the individual final. Look at that free walkover. She landed without a tremor at all. Again, rock solid. A difficult combination. Silivash a lot heavier than she was in Seoul and yet coping extremely well. She doesn't look to have lost any of her form. But often in gymnastics, the loss of stamina is the greatest thing and that would show on floor, not on beam. Beam is very much a mental task. Mind over matter. Certainly true that Daniela Silivash is nothing like the little waif who we saw really rise to world fame in the World Championships in Montreal in 1985. Oh, and a magnificent routine, ruined by the dismount. Lost five tenths for putting her hands down on the double back exit. She really can't afford to do things like that so close to the European Championships. And that really has put the cat amongst the pigeons, 9.4. And now everything depending on Marius German. Two twists from the top of the horse. Very difficult vault. And in this competition, the men are treated as if it's an individual final. They've got two vaults to perform. The scores then averaged. Nine point five six two five his score. And this is second vault, and the score of the two vaults will be averaged to give his final score and add on to Silivash's beam score of 9.4. And his average 9.562, giving a combined total of 18.962. And that sees the Romanians knocked out and the French go through to the next round. Welcome back to the Palais Omnisport. You're watching Eurosport and this exciting new event coming to its climax now. Here's the semi-final lineup. Two French pairs, but they're really up against it because Chen Kuiting and Wang Chong Sheng did very well in the individual finals and Svetlana Boginskaya and Valentin McGilney from the USSR, both individual apparatus world champions. Amory Baudouin from France. And she really does need a good second vault. The first one, a disaster. Not very difficult by today's standards, but certainly excellently performed. A Sukahara in a straight position. She showed a nice straight line. Didn't quite harness the landing because she had too much rotation, but only 9.1 an average. A nervous young man. And who can blame him? Gilles Petit on the parallel bars. Really does test the gymnasts in depth. I can see this form of competition, Monica, becoming more and more popular. Oh, yes, it must be tremendous fun because they know when they go into the arena that it could be very, very short-lived. Tremendous amount of adrenaline needed, I would think.
well. He anchored the landing well, but not really one of the most sparkling P bars exercises. And there's his score, 9.25, 18.35, with Baudouin only getting 9.1. And that looks a fairly easy target for the Chinese pair. Chen Kuting choosing beam for this round. She came fifth in the all-around event but scored really well on beam there putting in a 9.7 performance so this should be a safe piece for her head spring mount yes she's got a new combination in this beam exercise very very difficult but she's got to land it Beautiful elevation on her jumps and her tumbles. Here's the critical part. Flick flack, tuck back to Corbett landing. That was a very, very difficult movement because it's almost a tuck back somersault coming down to the handstand into chest roll, but she was slightly off center and so she loses five tenths for her fall. Well, she finished well, but some hope for the French there. They must have thought that they were out of it, but she's opened the door for them. 9.2 her score. That superb move. Nice to see the Chinese woman innovating. Wang Chongsheng to Hai Bar. I would say the Chinese still in control, but they can't afford any more mistakes. And they're very lucky to have come up against the French pair making major errors on both pieces. Good combination of release and catches there. Changes from invert into overgrasp, building up for the dismount. Triple back, just a little step backwards, but landed it well. And he really did swing that routine superbly. Some lovely lines on his uh, release and catch moves. There, a one-arm catch of almost going into box splits, demonstrating superb mobility. There the dismount, heavily cowboyed, but just look at the score, 9.8, and a total of 19-0 for the Chinese couple. And that's enough for them, they're through. Karine Boucher to floor. Boucher and Carmona have really got a task on their hands. They're up against Boginskaya and Magelny, the Russians. Pulling back out opener, though, on her floor routine. Landed well, she's really going for it. And the French crowd really rooting for the French teams, putting a tremendous amount of atmosphere into this very special competition. an experienced gymnast, a member of the French team in the Seoul Olympics, 
and competed in the European Championships in Moscow in 87. Came to grief on floor in the individual all-round competition. Scored 9.15 only. They'll need better than that here. The testing time is yet to come. This is the final tumble, and this is where it could all go wrong. Double back. She made it quite safely. And a good exercise from France's Karine Boucher. No big errors this time. And there's the score, 9.75. Well, a very high mark again. Lovely exercise. I'm not sure about 9.75 but it certainly set Claude Carmona up. Onto rings. Finished seventh in the individual all round. Second Frenchman just behind Christian Chevalier. Carmona, an excellent ring worker sinewy build but terrifically strong the compulsory press to handstand each voluntary exercise should have a press and a swing to handstand widening the rings there before his dismount double twisting double back clean routine there from Carmona well the French pair have certainly done their best they didn't freeze at the thought of the opposition. Gone through their exercises really well, and that's all you can ask of them. Two twists there in the double back somersault. 9.7 he scored, 19.45. It's a high mark, but when you think of the Russian scores, the lowest score for Svetlana Boginskaya in the all-around was a 9.8 and the lowest score for McGilney a 9.4 from somersault mount from Svetlana Boginskaya tremendous pressure piece of apparatus beam especially when you're expected to win flick straight flick flat but quite a hefty wobble at least a two tenths deduction I think she'll have taken a little psychological up out of the fact that um, Daniela Silavash came to grief on her dismount from the beam. We're getting very close to the European Championships. There's no question that Boginskaya and Silavash are looked upon as the two favorites, and they'll be watching each other with great interest to see just whether they are both in absolute peak form. Yes, John, this will certainly be a mental confrontation. He who can, or she who can stay on beam will feel the best after the day. But Boginskaya wasn't very high on her leaps at the beginning of the routine. Oops, and she's off too. Well, Silivash and Boginskaya won all. Minus one all. Won't be very happy with that. That's almost worse than coming to grief on the landing because I don't fancy Silivash will come to grief on the landing again, but Boginskaya looks very unsteady coming out of those tumbles. Finishes off with the double tuck back. And only 9.275 for Svetlana Boginskaya's beam. Not a very good start for the Russians. Now Valentin Mogilny. Magelny to the high bar. Great stylist on this piece of apparatus. The Ginga Somersault. He's not quite as spectacular as some of the other gymnasts, but he gets his difficulty in. There's the two catch -ups. That gives him all the difficulty he requires. And where he scores his extra marks are on those straight lines that he gets. That pirouette there into the invert grip. Now the dismount. Superb lines. Nobody looks better on the high bar than this man. And look at that finish. That was marvellous. 
Yes, he launches himself into the air. Two somersaults straight, one twist. Brilliant work. Everything he does is so precise. Just look at the timing on the re-catch from that catch. Yes, straight into another one. A nice straight-armed catch. And this is skill. And look at the marker, 10. But that's not enough. Boginskaya's fall has put the Russians out. Welcome back for the final of this unique event. And it's France versus China. Karine Boucher and Claude Carmona of France, and Chen Kuiting and Wang Chongsheng from China. Karine Boucher, first to go, and the only piece of apparatus she has left is the B. Very difficult front somersault dismount, safely landed. Gainer back, favouring back tumbling at the moment. But she did have a front somersault to begin with. The judge is looking for variety of skill and variety of travel. Quite a moment this for Karine Boucher. She finished third of the three French girls in the individual competition, right down in 14th place. But she's been superb in this doubles competition. Nice front somersault there. That's the difficult one because you can't see where you're landing. And she really is doing brilliantly. She's under tremendous pressure. Landed every skill so far. Just a hint of a wobble from the first combination tumble. The fact that she's left beam till last means it's certainly not her favorite piece. And it is... I think many of the women gymnasts find the most difficult piece, but so far so good. The dismount now. And that was classy, that was really brilliant. She had a front mount, a front in the middle, back tumbling, and then a double back dismount, just a step back on the landing. Once she got this far, she was never going to let it go wrong, and 9.7. Claude Carmona certainly can't blame his partner. She's done superbly. And they've both left the most difficult pieces of apparatus to last. Who would have thought pommels would have been the piece to leave till the end? Perhaps they both hoped that they wouldn't have to do these pieces, John, and they got further than they anticipated. Just a slight loss of leg tension there from Carmona. Just vital that he doesn't come off. Struggles through the dismount, but makes it. The home crowd roar their approval. Yes, it wasn't sparkling. He didn't lift very high from the pummels, but a solid score, 9.625 and 19.325, the combined score. So the Chinese pair know exactly what they have to do. They come onto the podium together, but it'll be Chun Kuiting to go first. 19.325. To beat between them. And Chun has the advantage of going. She saved her best piece till last. She's got the floor to come. And she's the individual gold medalist on this. Scored 9.95 in the individual final. And that really is brilliant tumbling. Dynamic, fast, and so tidy. Nice to see the Chinese gambling moniker. They obviously came to win, saving this piece till last. Really was a gamble. Yes, and it's come off because Fu Ting really has risen to the, uh, to the day. She's taken on all of the challenges under tremendous pressure. Put in a new move on beam. All right, she fell off. But she's really let the world see that she's around.
excellent musical interpretation and exquisite tumbling. Well, she got 9.95 in the individual final, and that was full of sparkle. Can she repeat it? Well, she's done better. It's a 10, a 10 for Chen Kui Ting. What a start and what a time to produce that sort of performance. And she really has given Wang Chongsheng a good start. I'm sure even he can do those sums, Monica. 19.325 to beat. He needs 9.35 or better. And that is a very mediocre mark for Pommels, so I'm sure that if... Oh, I shouldn't have said I was sure. He didn't come off, but he really did halt the routine in the middle. He won't lose five tenths, but at least three. Building up to a clean dismount, but oh, so very nearly a disaster. He knows it too. Look at him wiping his brow. But I think he must be confident that having stayed on, he's got better than 9.35. Yes, 9.525. The combined total, 19.525. And they take the gold medal for the doubles competition. But Wang Chongsheng knows that he's really got to thank his partner, Chen Kui Ting. I don't know what he'd have done if he'd thrown that sort of start away. Confirmation there of the result. The Chinese pair take the gold, the French pair the silver. The Russians beating the other French pair in the third, fourth playoff, taking the bronze. Well, we'll see the Chinese pair again in the World Championships in the autumn. But no doubt, who is the star of this show? Little Chen Kui Ting from China. And there'll be more gymnastics here on Eurosport this weekend. We'll be showing the Women's European Championships from Brussels. The first transmission, Sunday, 2100 hours, UK time, 2200 European time. For the moment, though, goodbye from the Palais Omnisport.